So today I'm going to be talking about my six favourite historical fiction books and the keen-eyed among you may notice that a certain author is missing from these books and that is Kate Morton and I know that a number of people would class her as an historical fiction author. I've said countless times that she's one of my favourite autobi authors but I have missed her out of this list because she writes dual timeline novels so although she has one element of her story set in a period in history she also has another timeline which is in the present day so I wouldn't class her as a typical historical fiction author so for that reason before anybody jumps up and says hang on I thought you said Kate Morton was your favourite or one of your favourite authors that's why she's missing from this list but I'm very excited to talk about the six that I have picked it was really difficult to whittle it down to these six books but let's just jump straight in So I'm not going to do these in an order of ranking, I'm actually going to do them in alphabetical order because it was hard enough just picking six, never mind then trying to rank those six from my favourite to my least favourite, it just wasn't going to happen. So I'm going to do these alphabetically and the first book I'm going to talk about is The Greatest Night by Elizabeth Chadwick. This is the first book in a duology. It is a fantastic, fantastic blend of fact and fiction and it follows the story of William Marshall who was a young penniless knight um, but went on to become the Earl of Pembroke after falling in with Eleanor of Aquitaine. And yeah, as I said, this is just so rich in historical detail. I have been to the residence of the Earl of Pembroke off the back of reading this book. It's just so, so good. I think I shared this before, but I can vividly remember reading the second part of this story, The Scarlet Lion, and getting to the end and just sobbing and sobbing because I couldn't believe that his story was finished. And it's just so good. She just, Elizabeth Chadwick just has a way of bringing the history to life, a very subtly injecting the fictitious elements so that it feels like you're reading a, a real life account of what happened and yeah it's so absorbing and so rich and I just really really enjoyed it. Next up we have All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. This is set during the Second World War and we follow the story of two young people. We have a Parisian girl who has been blind since the age of six and we have a German orphan who finds himself in the Hitler youth and we follow their stories as their paths eventually um, cross. This again is so so descriptive and so rich and so enthralling. Um, I know that um, the writing style is quite lyrical so it isn't for everybody but I absolutely adored this book. I thought that it was done so so well. It's really made me consider some of my opinions because um, especially for Werner who is the German orphan who ends up in the Hitler Youth you really feel his confusion and his conflicting emotions because joining the Hitler Youth is his opportunity to make something of himself but at the same time he's really aware that what is happening is not correct and it just challenged some of the opinions and thoughts that I perhaps had but yeah absolutely magnificent. Then we have Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett and yes this is a chunky book and this is only the first one in a series but it's such a good book and it's really hard to describe it without making it sound incredibly boring because it's set during 12th century England and it's basically about the construction of a cathedral and it's so difficult to get into more detail than that. Um, but it's about, it just, it just is so much more than the building of this cathedral. It's primarily character driven and Ken Follett just unleashes a whole rich, complex cast of characters um, and you just follow their stories from a really humble stonemason who's just trying to get work for his family to an arrogant imposing monarch and everybody in between you get characters from all walks of life all experiences all with hopes and ambitions and dreams and it's just such a good book and I honestly tell everybody this who asks me about it the fact that it is let me look how many pages it is it's over a thousand pages long 
but it really doesn't feel like it's that long because you just get swept up in this epic masterpiece of a story and you get totally sucked in, totally absorbed and it just, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't say that you fly through it but you really don't notice the length because you just want to follow this this story and see how everything turns out for everybody and it's absolutely fantastic. I would highly recommend it. Do not be put off by the size. You would not regret picking this up if you enjoy historical fiction. Then we have a book which will be no surprise to anybody because I harp on about it all the blinking time and that is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This is another World War II story. It follows the tale of two sisters, two French sisters who are very very different. We have Vianne who is the oldest. She is very family orientated. She focuses on responsibility and doing what is right and her world is turned upside down when her husband goes off to fight in the French army. Her village becomes German occupied and she is told that a Nazi officer has to come and house with her. Then we have Isabella who is the impulsive, hot-headed younger sister who goes off and joins the resistance and I absolutely adore the way that Kristen Hanna tells the story of these two sisters as they face the toughest challenges of their lives. She manages to evoke emotion and explore humanity particularly when it comes to the story of Vianne and her relationship with this Nazi officer. It's just such a good book and it's not that long it's really easy to read if you like world war ii historical fiction or even if you just like historical fiction then i would highly recommend this one i personally am really looking forward to rereading it it says on the front in love we find out who we want to be in war we find out who we are and yeah it's just absolutely fantastic the next book i have um was actually really difficult for me to pick because it's written by an author who has created two historical fiction series that I am just completely obsessed with and choosing between them was really tricky but in the end I went for the one that was perhaps a little bit more unique to the type of historical fiction that I normally read and so I've picked Wolf of the Plains by Con Igledon. Con Igledon has written a number of other historical fiction series. The other series that I'm talking about being his Caesar one. Uh, I think the first book might be The Gates of Rome or something like that and that is again fantastic, um, a great, great blend of fact and fiction once again. Um, and I could talk about both of these series so, so much, um, despite the fact that obviously I know the outcome of the story of Julius Caesar. I actually cried at the end of that series when uh, Caesar dies, even though, you know, it's part of history, we know it's not gonna happen. Con Igledon managed to make me really root for Caesar and understand him as a man and just feel real sympathy for him um, and I think that it is a really special author that can do that. But enough of that because that isn't the series that I picked. I have chosen um, the Genghis Khan series that Con Igledon wrote and this is literally the story of Genghis Khan's life from when he was a young boy living on the plains of Mongolia right the way through to the epic empire that he created and how his sons um, followed in his footsteps and again the thing that I probably appreciate the most about this is that a lot of the story that is told is rooted in real life historical events and you really get a sense that Con Ingledon did his research and he knows the story that he is telling. Um, I'll just read you what it says on the back. Uh, the opening of the Conqueror series, a remarkable story of heroism and adventure, of a boy who had to become a man too soon, of a family and a tribe who had to learn to win to survive. It's fantastic. It's complex, it's remarkable, it's interesting, um, it's enjoyable, it's just, it's just so many of those things and it's just not a period of history that I would necessarily have read about had Con Igledon not written this series. So yeah, another one that I would definitely recommend. And then the final book I'm going to talk about is the Shard Lake series by CJ Sansom. This is actually the second book. The first book is called Dissolution, but I think I lent it out to someone and never got it back, unfortunately. So this is a series of books set during the Tudor times and we follow the story of a solicitor called Shard Lake who finds himself, unfortunately, Unfortunately, in the services of the very infamous Thomas Cromwell and he has to go and undertake 
various different services for the crown um he gets himself into trouble he uncovers mysteries it's just it's really really good i particularly enjoy this because it's a nice blend of almost like old-fashioned detective it's almost like an old-fashioned detective novel mixed in with historical fiction but cj sansom as a writer um, it's just really really good it's not boring it's interesting again you can tell that he's done a lot of research about the time that he is writing about i'm really interested and fascinated by the tudor period and i enjoy that this has kind of got a twist it's not just the story of king henry the eighth and his wives but it's somebody who was literally on the ground um, and part of just the general population during this time and i always find that really fascinating so yeah another one that i would definitely recommend so there you go they are my six current favorite historical fiction books do leave me any recommendations for any historical fiction that you've read that you think I might particularly enjoy. Let me know if you've read any of the ones I've mentioned or if you're going to read any of the ones I've mentioned. I'd love to chat with you about it. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to give me the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and I will see you all soon.